Uh, one. Welcome everyone, we're glad you're here. We're seeing that we have India and Australia, Sweden in the house and more people are coming in. We'll get started in just a minute. Wonderful, so grateful so many people are here. We had a huge number of people sign up for this conversation circle and we're hoping for a robust crowd without being tremendously overwhelming. So deeply grateful folks are here. And we'll get started in just one minute. And you may have, if you've just logged on, we're inviting people to introduce themselves in the chat because we have so many people attending. If you would like to put your name, what organization you're with and where you're zooming in from today. If you wanna tell us more about your bio region, that would be fine too, but let's just start with name, organization and where you're zooming in from. Great, and people are still flying through the waiting room and joining us. So it's five, five after the hour now, and it's a great time to get started with the NGO CSW NGO Forum, Women's Poverty and Climate Change Conversation Circle. We're grateful that you're with us. And we're going to start by introducing ourselves as co-moderators. And then we have a wonderful program outlined for you today with uh, three rich opportunities to be in conversation with each other in breakout rooms. So if we could go to that second slide, please, Annabelle. Great. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Beth Blissman. I am grateful to serve as the United Nations representative for the US-based Loretto community, a community of Catholic sisters and lay people in the Catholic tradition doing work mainly in this realm of education, but also working for peace and acting for justice. I've been the UN rep for seven years and Deeply grateful to work with NGO CSW and my two other fabulous co-moderators today. I'm going to pop it from New York City, which is where I'm based, over to Tanzania now uh, to my friend Kai to introduce herself. Over to you, Kai. Thank you. I will switch my camera on for a little bit for this introduction. Um, it's good to see you all here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Kainu Njeri, or Kai, um, from Kenya, but based in Tanga, Tanzania. And I, I'm interested in this conversation for personal reasons and for work reasons. I am a regenerative systems uh, designer and thinker. And one of the areas that this, um, this I experienced this is in food forest design, um, regenerative agriculture, and seed sovereignty, also in maternal health and infant health care. Um, so this, this is a conversation that's very, very personal and very important to me and the work that I do here. And I'm excited to have us all jump in and see where we go with it. And I will pass it on to Julie. Thank you, Kai and Beth. So wonderful to see you here today and work with you and be part of this, this discussion, this conversation circle. My name's Julie Trone and I live in Colorado, USA. My background right now is I'm an active member of Zont International. I joined in 2017 and um, I'm one of the members of the International Zontuses now to climate justice work group. We've been working for about three years on um, saying now to climate justice through gender equal climate action. 
I also co-chair a um, gender equal climate action think tank committee um, with the Zonta USA caucus, chair a committee at the district level under the same name, and I'm the club president. So it keeps me very busy and focused on women's issues, women's human rights, and uh, empowering and lifting women out of poverty, uh, ending child marriage and other campaigns that all are interconnected. So I'm very excited today to talk about poverty and climate action. So I'm going to throw it back to Beth and let's get started. Great, thank you so much, Julie. And Annabelle, if we could go to the next slide. Yes, just a few ground rules for us to keep in mind as we move forward. Uh, please mute yourself unless speaking, uh, and we will mute you if we hear rustling or background conversations. So we apologize ahead of time for that, but we have so many people in this conversation right now. Um, we're going to have to ask people to please mute unless speaking. Um, we're also doing our very, very best to follow the NGO CSW guidelines to create this conversation circle as a very safe place to both express yourself and to ask questions. Uh, so we would ask everyone to please be mindful about that, as mindful as possible, and please refrain from any rudeness or negative feedback or, or gaslighting or side conversations or verbally abusive comments. Uh, we'd like to ask you not to interrupt each other. This is something that we often are now practicing on Zoom. Many of us have been quite familiar with the Zoom in the past four years. And if you would like to maintain bandwidth, uh, feel free to turn off your video unless you're speaking. We would also ask you to please make sure and make, uh, make sure your name correlates with who you actually are instead of an organization or like iPhone 27G. If you could change that to your actual name, that would be ideal. And um, I did want to note that Annabelle will be popping into the chat the link to the NGO CSW uh, safety and security statement. And we, there we go, safety guidelines. Thank you so much, Annabelle. And deep thanks to um, Annabelle, who is serving as our tech, both our tech person and our bouncer today. So anyone who tries to uh, interrupt the, the Zoom will be bounced from the Zoom. So deeply appreciate your bouncer skills there, Annabelle, that you are building and deeply appreciate the help with all the technology and getting us into the breakout rooms when it's time for that. And it soon will be time for that. And I'm deeply grateful to be able to turn it back over to my colleague, Kai, who's going to start us off with conversations about climate justice. Thank you, Beth. <clears throat> um, I will ask to have my video off just to ensure that the quality of my audio is good. Um, my Wi-Fi is a little shaky today. Um, but so, one of the main things that, um, and, and, and I, I love that you said this in the introduction, Julie, that it's all connected. Um, where climate justice meets um, women's work and issues, race issues, like all of it, it's all uh, connected. And so I'm going to tell you um, two stories today uh, that bring that to life a little more. And one of them is focused on maternal health. As I, as I said, that's one of the areas that I work in. And in the past, um, so this is the place where food systems work and maternal health meet for me. Um, in the past uh, about 10 to 20 years, um, there's been, we've observed um, a decline in maternal health that has um, resulted in issues where, I mean, on the extreme end, uh, we have uh, the mortality, maternal mortality rates going up. Um, we have rate of cesarean births going up. We have uh, infant uh, weight going down. Um, and some of these issues are not directly connected to climate change, 
and some of them are in the way that climate climate change connects to food systems and nutrition. And so as we're going to see as we move into the next um, bit is that one of the ways that, one of the things that has been greatly affected by climate change is agriculture. And the seasons have become very unpredictable. Where I am right now, it's supposed to be heavily raining. It's not yet. And I know each one of us can point to such a, a shift they've observed in their environment. Longer winters or shorter winters, longer summers or, long, or shorter summers. Um, For us, it's been the rainy seasons. We have two seasons in a year. You have the rainy season and the not rainy season. Um, And the rainy seasons have become harder to predict and shorter. Um, And when it rains, it rains heavy. Um, So we also end up having flooding um, and it's not as uh, spread out. And so that's making it so farmers are having to resort to um, irrigation, um, which is not in itself a bad thing. But one of the other effects of that is that it destabilizes the ecosystem. And so where you'd have certain um, pioneer plants um, not showing up on a farm on land, now they begin to um, to present themselves because they're attempting to stabilize the pH, the um, the, nu- the nutrient value of the soil. Um, you have certain bugs and creatures showing up as well, because if you have a farm that has food, then you're going to attract everyone to it. Um, and that's just the way it works. And so things are out of balance. Um, fungi. Um, so the micro the microbiome gets gets thrown out of balance. And this has been observed all over the world. But one of the things that that has impacted is the quality of food that we're getting. And so what's happening is because we have an increased rate of um, quote unquote pests, I think they're just bugs um, trying to live their best life. Um, We have um, pioneer plants, what we call weeds in in contemporary um, agriculture. We have more and more varieties showing up on farms than there have been in the past. And so what farmers are having to do is use more herbicides and more pesticides. Um, And so apart from the quality of of food going down because the nutritional values are going down, this is, we're recording between 15 to 20% decrease in nutritional value of food on average. in the last uh, 20 years or so. Um, so you have that happening and then you have the increase of um, herbicides and pesticides. And so what's happening is the quality of, the, of our food, of the food that we're taking now has greatly decreased. Now, that affects maternal health in this in, in the way that um, the, the pregnant woman's body is not receiving as many, as many nutrients as it's supposed to be receiving to build this little human that it's that it's supposed to be building. And so what we're what we're seeing show up is babies are getting born um underweight. And and um uh there's also an increased rate of post uh, postpartum uh hemorrhaging and a whole a whole bunch of issues. Now, there is work going on around this. Um, there's a lot of people who are observing this, different organizations and figuring out how to go into these villages. Um, I'm based in, in Tanzania. We have a project in Arusha, um, going to these villages and um, establish food forests, establish regenerative farms there so that we're able to shift this story. Um, a version of this is happening again all over the world where women are gaining more access to land, um, where in the past it's been passed down um, on the male side of the family. Now we are having to and getting to fight for access to land because a lot of the times it will be, um, and we'll show you um, in upcoming slides, the percentage of which um, uh of, of which it is women that are growing food, women who are most aware of 
the needs of the community in terms of nutrition and that and yet have the least access to land and decision making but then as this awareness is growing um policies um social movements are ensuring that the, that there's a shift happening um in this and so there is still a lot of work to do but this these two stories that um meet um are some of the ways that um climate change and gender issues women's work women's issues are colliding and how we are working to improve the situation and shift things so i will end my story there so we can go into breakout rooms and gather stories from you that have attended and let's see what we can put together at the end of the breakout rooms we're going to have a chance to share from each room and see what similarities do we have from different parts of the world what are some of the differences how are we addressing them um, and then we can move on um, to some highlights thank you Just a quick note that you may have to join the breakout room yourself. So beautiful. And Annabelle, what room am I supposed to be in? Hold on, I'm reassigning. Looks like, oh yeah, four has Morgana, perfect. Yeah, does the split look good so far? Yeah, Make so sure I don't miss anybody. One and three yet. I'd be happy mm -hmm. to take three. All right, I'll put you in three. Oh wait, unless okay, Beth, you want to be in three? Sure. And then Julie, I'll put you in. Looks like six. Okay. Uh, we have, we need someone to moderate in one room that, because there's only five of us. So maybe whatever room Pamela oh, I is I thought we were doing six. All right. Yeah, you know what? She is not here. You can put me in six, but uh, Kai's in five, Morgana's in four, uh, Beth is in three. I don't, um, yeah, I'm just looking. I'll be there in a second. Yeah, so room one, I think we need someone to. Maybe you can jump back and forth. Hey, y'all, if you want to look at the bottom of your screen, there should be a way for you to enter the breakout room you were assigned.
Hello. Am I missing on something? I just joined and I have entered into a breakout room. Uh, if anybody can explain me what you're doing. Hi, yeah. Um, I think it looks like you're assigned to room one. Uh, if you join on the bottom of your screen, they're going through their climate justice stories. Okay, I cannot find it on my screen. I'm trying to see something. If you go to the bottom of your screen, there should be an ellipsis, like three dots, and then the word more under it. Click okay. that and in the menu, breakout room. Meeting settings, I can see on three dots. Okay. Nothing. Uh, no, I like can't the, see. The, the menu on the bottom of your screen, like your Zoom screen. Okay. There should be three dots. Okay, I'm the word more. Yes, I have clicked on this more, and I can see disconnect audio and meeting settings. Sorry. Okay. No, there are... I think you're looking at something. <laughs> um, I guess like if you open up like full screen Zoom, there should be like a menu that says things like mute, start video, security, participants, share screen, things like that. Click on the three dots that says more. And then there should be like chat, um, polls, like things like that. Breakout rooms is an option. So just click on breakout rooms. Okay.
Welcome back, everyone. As we all come back into this space, just invite everyone to take a deep breath. I don't know about your group, but our group was rather intense. We heard some intense. So I'm going to turn it over to Julie now to facilitate some, some chat backs as we have just a little bit of time to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Yes, we had heard some wonderful stories. They all tied together, but uh, let me go ahead and start with, I'll just give my highlights. How about that? If everybody's okay with that, and then we'll move down the line. All right. So we listened to three stories. That's, um, and we talked, I talked a little bit about the uh, poverty issues in the United States and how they connect to climate change. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, affordability and displacement from weather disasters and um, our food systems are breaking down. And um, in the United States, women's uh, human rights have uh, deteriorated. And so um, child marriage for one, not every state um, is against child marriage. So we have a lot of uh, women who are um, getting married under the age of 18. They end up getting divorced before 18, single mom, can't get a lawyer, can't get a, can't go to a domestic violence shelter if needed. They end up in a, a life of poverty. It's really hard to uh, climb their way out. So that's just one issue that we have here. 11 states are now 18 plus for marriage, uh, 11 out of 50. So we have some work to do to work on that aspect of uh, poverty. Um, okay, so Monica from Yuma, Arizona talked about the U.S.-Mexico border. They have We have an um, influx of migrants coming through our southern border. She talked about that because of the climate issues at, in the south of the United States. Uh, one of the areas in Arizona that a lot of migrants come through from everywhere in the world, not just Central America or South America, is a very harsh area, very harsh conditions, severe colds, in the winter, severe heat, in the summer, it's a small town, there's no resources, it's very dangerous. Human trafficking expands itself in that way because they try to help people, but they're not really. And um, there's high unemployment and stress from these social justice issues. So that's happening at our southern border. Rev Laverne from South Carolina talked about human trafficking. She does work in that area. She said poverty is very low in parts of South Carolina. Uh, women and men are led into human trafficking as a result. There are many in those areas that have not had the opportunities to um, have higher education. So poverty is connected to the lack of education the lack of finances and human trafficking. The uh, weather is involved with that because of harsh conditions in South Carolina. It can be very, very hot. And uh, so it's affecting crops. Um, and then Rabon uh, talked from Africa. She works with a community that are empowering women because food security is very much an issue worldwide. And this community or this community organization is providing women seeds to grow food in their own backyard. Not only does it help them with affordability, so they have food on their tables that they've grown themselves, but they don't have to purchase it in the grocery stores because the pricing has um, gone up. She felt like the world is going through an economic crisis. I tend to agree. Um, and this um, this seed program does help women receive a way to afford food and put food on their table, which actually lifts them, maybe not out of poverty in my eyes, but it, having food on the table has wonderful benefits uh, to lifting out of poverty. So it's a great foundation. So from that, I will throw it to Morgana and hear what she has to say. Um, thank you. Um, 
to be very brief, first of all, I was uh, really happy that we had a very diverse, uh, geographically diverse uh, group uh, with uh, participants from Australia, the American South and North, from India, uh, from Nigeria. And so that we had geographically, we had a really diverse group, which is really brilliant. Um, Alwyn from Australia talked about how the seasons have dr dramatically changed. Um, in recent years and it's become extremely hot so she's in Australia um, and Australia is all, always she said that can you believe that the whole um, you know like f from the north moving the whole climate change moving 500 kilometers to the south so that what was normally in in the north is, is a sort of climate uh, happening in the south which is incredibly you know for them, it's it's had such an impact on um, a lot of people. Don't realise how uh, the fishing industry is very important to um, uh, to Australia, and and she was saying that because uh, the fishing industry is really really collapsing now, that often it's the women, the women who have to bear the the brunt, um, and so she was explaining how. It's had such an impact. The loss of income is having such an impact on how women, wives are having to cope. Uh, men cope in their own way, but they usually turn to uh, uh, alcohol, where women, they can't do that. They have to continue to, to look after the, the families and the children, of course. Um, this, this, uh, this movement of or, or a rise of extreme heat was also something that Carolyn talked about. She came from the American South, and she was saying how the because of the extreme heat, there are new or added health issues, uh, whether it was like allergies or the fact that people just can't cope with, with the extra heat. So we're already seeing that the impact, usually because of increased heat, extreme heat, the people are having more and more problems, health problems, which is exacerbating the whole uh, the whole community because it's putting pressure on the health system, um, and not and not just on, on the education system, of course, schools and and, and what have you. Spiri from uh, Spir Spirha, sorry if I got your name wrong, uh, from India. She also said it was a rise in temperature, which was really really affecting the uh, the rural areas. The rural areas, of course, India is still a very, uh, very much dependent on the rural areas and uh, farming and uh, etc. They're seeing a lot of problems with the health problems, especially uh, women who are pregnant and elderly women. It seems again that the women uh, are, are suffering the most, uh, not only because of, of lack of income, but because of facilities. The facilities are just not there. One of the other things that um, women in, in her part of India have to cope with is actually they are responsible for water. And because there still isn't a proper water system, they still have to carry water from the, and the, are actually having to carry it over much longer distances now. Uh, so fetching water is the physical exertion. Um, it was actually funny that Zoe added later that not only was the physical exertion of these longer treks. She was saying as well that a lot of the uh, women, uh, because they're having to work for further, are actually also <coughs> prone, prone to attacks by men. So they're actually not safe. So these are, these are things we just don't even think about, that because the women have to work further, they're taking longer, uh, they're really, really vulnerable. Uh, so this is one thing that Zoe was also pointing out, that the, the links to climate change, but the links to things like domestic violence, we just really, really underestimate all the effects, the yeah. social effects. Yeah. Uh, so it was, um, she, she was also yeah. saying. Morgana, thank you. I ha I'm going to um, have to ask you if we could stop here because we have a few others to. Yes, okay. We, have, so the, we, the, we need the, to keep, keep it short, yeah. but I appreciate the rich conversation you had, those are extremely could, important issues. Exactly, exactly. But as I say, the, the, the major thing is the extreme heat, which is causing uh, problems also linked, as I say, to domestic violence, which yes. I think should be really, for women, this is really, really crucial.
Yes, Thank you. there's uh, the heat caught has caused six percent increase in domestic violence worldwide as a result. Okay, let's go to well, Kai is not uh, able to talk. Let's go to Beth. Uh, great, thanks, Julie. I'm going to model for our, all of our groups too, just a really brief report back, which is all we're going to have time to do this morning. We heard uh, we had a great, rich international group, and we heard from folks from Japan, the north part of Iran, and Durban, South Africa, as well as the U.S. Um, the important thing is, especially the people we're raising, is the safety of women and girls in times of climate emergency, and those times of climate emergency, times of flood or tsunami or disasters are only going to increase. How do we center the needs of women and girls in that um, safety? Certainly access to food, healthy food that hasn't been sitting around for ages, um, money to help people recover after disasters, and then loss of work. Uh, we'll need entrepreneurship to help women, especially as we've already noted, who are very responsible for growing food in many parts of the world rebuild and reshape. Um, and then for those of us in the global north, the very important thing, the most important thing we can be doing is decolonizing our own minds. For folks who do permaculture and study the different zones, start right here with zone zero between the ears, especially those of us who are male-bodied, um, but also those of us who are female-bodied or wherever we are in the gender spectrum. We need to decolonize our own minds and be working and collaborating actively with, with women in other parts of the world, ideally in the global South. I know we have not heard from Sandra's group yet. Uh, would anyone from your group, Sandra, like to uh, chat back really quickly? You're muted. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Sandra. Yes, Shweta has said that she would give a report from our group, and thank you, Shweta, for, for doing that. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Sandra. Um, um, our group was, again, uh, had similar kind of uh, conversations that have already been reported. Uh, but particularly, we heard a story from Janet, who is from Kenya, and uh, Apu Chandra, who is from, uh, you know, Bangladesh, um, apart from people who are in Global North, uh, one thing which uh, really struck in our group is that the importance of grassroots stories, like what is happening really on the ground needs to come at the forefront because um, there is so much of inequity in what is known in the global international circles and what is actually happening on the ground. So there is uh, need for more of these conversations like we are having right now. And, you know, um, I think Annie, who is based in London and she's originally from New York, she she said a very interesting thing. She said she's in real estate and she said it's just now that people are realizing, OK, climate change is related to mental health and anxiety, but it has been known from a long time and it's time for us to now take action and not just discuss and similar uh, things were uh, supported by Sandra and Suzanne, who said that, you know, uh, because pollinators are decreasing and um, it is everything, the climate change has direct implications on agriculture and, you know, women's poverty. They push women into poverty. I'll stop there. It's a uh, passionate uh, subject and our group was really, really intense. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. That was wonderful. It was nice to hear from all parts of the world from your group. I love that. Um, we had one more, we had a group that I'm not sure who the moderator was, and I don't really know which number group that was. It might've been one or two. Does um, maybe our moderator, Annabelle, could help us with that? Or actually let's, I'll give, you know, for like 30 seconds to a minute. Anybody? Okay, so let's move forward so we can keep going with our our stories and our information. Uh, I understand Kai if is not on. Is that still true, Beth? Oh, no, she's on. She just wasn't sure about her internet. So let's give Kai a chance here. Good. Uh, can we okay, hear we... you, Kai? Next slide, please, Annabelle.
Uh, we may have lost her, Julie. Why don't you jump in? Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in. Thank you. These are some statistics you can read on the impact of climate change. The, the biggest one here from UN Women is by 2050, climate change will push up to 158 million more women and girls into poverty and lead 236 million more women into hunger. That is a lot of women. We are already over the 150 million line uh, with women and girls in poverty now. So imagine that, that is a, a big change. Um, we've all talked about this. Everyone is realizing this. We are like-minded in that we know that it's an added stressor and it aggravates women's vulnerability. Everyone has reported that in the last few minutes. And we're less able to confront climate change due to limited rights limited educational opportunities, limited land ownership, and skills to adapt and survive. And that is what we need. I'm gonna throw it out there. That is innovation right there. How can we get this to, how can we advocate and, and, uh, and innovate so that women have more rights? Okay, next slide, please. We chose to show an industry example, which is very poignant because Kai told her story at the beginning about agriculture and many of us talked about food. So women make up 43% of the world's agricultural workforce. <clears throat> and they also make up the bulk of African agriculture, up to 60% or more. That's according to the World Bank. So agriculture employs 22.8% of the world's workers. So think about those stats right now. And let's go to the next slide. Now, we talked about weather disasters, heat, drought, extreme rain, and too much heat. Uh, these, all of this is um, affecting our water, accessibility, availability, uh, pollution. Uh, too much makes it, uh, can wash away crops. We saw that in Pakistan not too long ago with the cotton crops. <clears throat> so, because of that, it's harder to have food grow and we need food and we need water to live. Asian, the Asian Development Bank reported that between 1961 and 2021, the climate change has affected our global agricultural yield by 21%. Now, by the 2080s, <clears throat> it's a reduction in agricultural productivity, but we're seeing that now. So it's already a reduction. And so that is the issue here, whether disasters impact women and girls, <clears throat> men too, men and boys, they impact families, communities, because there's less food and less water, it increases conflict, uh, hunger, poverty. Let's go to the next slide, please. So let's go ahead and jump into our next, um, in a second, jump into our next discussion. You know what? Julie, yeah. seeing as we're almost at 11 a.m., which means we only have just over 30 minutes left total, <clears throat> why don't we combine this with the great stuff you're about to share? Because I think everyone knows what the challenges are at this point and hopefully has some sort of vision. We'll put vision and action together. Okay, that's Here a great idea. About the donut economic circular economy stuff from you. Okay, sounds that sounds perfect. Let's Perfect. go to the next slide, please. All right. So we talked about social injustice and we talked about climate change. It might be uh, interesting to note that the economy may have a huge factor in what is going on with our world. So what we do, what we're, our economy around the world is called GDP, and it has nothing to do with inequality and social injustice. So there are uh, economists around the world that are working on new models and some cities and the country of the Netherlands have already, and Wales actually, have already started to, to in, in, use this newer ecological model. This one is the donut econo economics model. <clears throat> And you'll see from the inner circle of the donut, which is all in green, the inner circle are all the social justice issues, things we've already talked about here today. 
This is what happens and you can measure this in each area and what's happening in your community and uh, in what's happening in your state, your region, your um, country, and then what's happening in the world. So I'm not gonna go further with each uh, showing different cities or countries, just know that there are different um, issues in each country and city and community. On the outside of the donut are all of the climate change issues that we deal with. When there is huge air pollution, for example, you will have this whole section in red. When there's gender inequality, this whole sec this section will be in red. So if you put in red all the areas of your community that you are struggling with and all the areas in your community that uh, you are struggling with regarding climate change, then you can see how, then you can move forward and build a plan and set goals so that your community knows where to focus. And the whole point of this idea of looking at economy is to make sure we have a safe and just space for humanity. It creates balance so everyone and, and our planet thrives. So there needs to be a vast cultural shift. Beth talked about that from her group in this direction. So from there, let's move forward in our slides. Beth, I'm gonna throw it to you. Okay, so here is where, oh, I hate to use a car metaphor, but what comes to mind is where the rubber hits the road about, uh, we know what many of the challenges are. We've heard a few innovative and um, complementary and creative solutions so far today. In our small group, we heard of a couple people who are trying to uh, really move back from using plastics at all because they're made from fossil fuels and they don't break down. And we really need to be doing that. And we heard the inspirational story of how the country of Kenya has banned plastic bags. Don't quite know how that's going. I'm hoping it's going well. Um, but the policy, we've heard that policy is very important. That's one way to action, but only one way to action. We also have people all around the world, primarily women, uh, creating ecosystem restoration camps getting involved with intentional communities, certainly growing our own food. We've heard from several different people the importance of seeds, right? So seed saving, learning how um, plants get pollinated in order to produce fruit, learning even just to grow a few things on our own, even if it's just herbs in a windowsill, learning the cycles of our plant friends. And of course, the work in shifting our own mindset towards a more close relationship with nature. Um, one tool for me in recent years, our particular community, the Loretto community has been having book groups to take in the wonderful book, Braiding Sweetgrass by indigenous Potawatomi author, Robin Wall Kimmerer, who Robin actually bridges two worlds, right? She works in the US academic system as well as embracing her own indigenous worldview. And she talks about the importance of reciprocity and respect and all kinds of other worldview shifting tools that we can all be applying in different areas and then working to spread the word about, right? So there are lots of actions that people could be taking, things as small as reading a book or being more mindful and aware of reducing food waste in our own lives or the lives of our family. Um, looking at new and creative ways to reuse things, especially things that might happen to be plastic. I just went and as I was walking home from the subway last night, I went by a restaurant that gets olive oil in these huge two foot by three foot plastic bins and it's only olive oil, so I keep them and wash them out and use them to store water and move water around my gardens in my backyard, and sometimes I plant in them as well. 
So what are ways we can take things that are destined for the trash and rethink and reuse them? So this will be the time to go into breakout rooms again. And I think we can do this one for 15 minutes, Annabelle. Thank you for popping us into some breakouts. And this is creative ideas about ways that you would like to get involved to help bring about some solutions. And please, if you're already involved, please share what you're doing. Thank you. See you back here in 15 minutes. Breakout rooms are now open. Is everybody able to unmute? Um, sorry, I did not see any option for this. Yes, I got it. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. Wow. Hello. So glad you're here. What rich conversations we have had. We have 10 minutes left. We only have another slide, and that is our closing slide, but it's, oh, we have our next slide. So, uh, Beth, if you want to go over this slide real uh, quickly, but I do want to say, if we can just take before while you're looking at this a, a minute or two one highlight from each group just what what did you what just in a few words super super succinct even though all of the words were so powerful so important so necessary so let's start with beth yeah, we had a great group coming up with a bunch of ideas. We heard about research. We heard about um, small actions that can't be public because it would get folks in trouble with the government. Uh, we heard about hopeful circular economy efforts and, and initiatives. So it was a very hopeful discussion. And uh, before we go to our tiny challenge, let me see if anyone, um, I'll pop it again over to you, Sandra, to see if anyone from your group wanted to do a quick report back. Okay, I'll, I'll report back real quickly from our group. We talked about the difficulty of recycling, especially in the, in the terms of plastic, but um, Apu from Bangladesh uh, talked with us about how they're, and or specifically how he is working with that in terms of using natural um, um, things, uh, natural items in, build, in the building and housing, and such as bamboo, which is a big important, and he showed us the actually a picture of where he is working. His office is made out of bamboo, but they also recycle the plastic by making plastic blocks that can be used, reused in the, the, um, the housing, um, as well as in other things like souvenirs for tourists or in clothing or in other instruments. So um, there was a way of actually hands-on recycling about plastic so that it doesn't go to just the landfills, even though some of the recycling centers say they're gonna recycle, they actually don't. So we got some constructive ideas of how to reuse plastic, but also the emphasis on using natural materials and um, whenever possible and local materials, natural and local materials. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Let's move on to Morgana. Did you, do you want a, a sentence or two? Fill us in. With yes. what yeah, um, I think uh, one of the things I've been learning recently is uh, using this word global, you know, think globally, but act locally. And this can coming time and time again, people want to be involved. So the best thing to do is, is use co uh, community collaboration even to the point of local government, but involving people locally. That is the most effective. Uh, so that's the message that I got from my group. Thank you, Morgana. Now we had possibly, well, I don't know if Kai was able to moderate. Um, whoever was in Kai's room, was it Bobby or Kay? Do we have any of those moderators here that want to say anything? I, I was in group one with Kai and um, on, almost all the ladies in our group were for the, mostly most of them were working in SRHR and advocacy of the women, women's rights. And um, they all shared that uh, we should be, um, uh, there should be more inclusion of women in the policy making for the climate change. And as the women are, um, into uh, farming and they are into agriculture, more representation um, for uh, 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 on, on the ground for uh, climate change and um, its effect on uh, their countries. Thank you, Sanam. That was a wonderful, it sounds like it was a wonderful and rich conversation. Um, okay, what my group talked about actually connected the dots with everybody else's. We talked about collaborating. We talked about advocating. We talked about um, areas of need, homelessness, to and lifting people out of poverty in different ways to address homelessness. 
That was a very rich conversation. I am taking notes, so we will try to share that with all of you. I will send it to um, the CSW folks and hopefully they can share that. Um, does anybody else have a quick statement on what they talked about? Okay, hearing none in our last five minutes, uh, we're not gonna ask you to put this in chat because it would totally fill up the chat, uh, but we have another way for you to share what you're choosing to do with us. So we're putting it out there to invite people to get involved with a tiny challenge. Um, we have a good sense now of some of the current climate justice challenges around the world and in our own communities. So as you go through this, we always talk about how the best place to do the work is where your passion meets the world's needs, right? And so we'd like to ask everyone, first of all, thank you all for coming and ask you to spend some time after this session thinking about your passion, right? And then maybe ask some questions, both of yourself and looking around wherever you live, whatever your home bioregion is, and think about ways you could be using your passion for good. And then take a small action uh, today or in the next couple of days, or take a couple small actions in the next couple of days and weeks to do something to connect with, um, to connect your passion with the needs that you see happening around you, right? And I'm gonna pop it back over to Julie to talk about a way that you can share that with us and we can share it with each other. Thank you, Beth, appreciate it. Can you go to the next slide, please? It's coming. It will get to our next slide, but it's really important. So everybody hang in there. Oh, here it is. Thank you. Uh, so we want you to share your idea. One thing we all talked about is collaboration, connection. How do we do this? We connect our voices, our passions, our lives, our stories, and we are powerful and we make things happen. That's my feeling. I hope it's yours. I hope you will let that build in your mind and your hearts today. So share your ideas with us and send us an update for the next month. We are collecting data, not like statistics, but data on your stories, your climate change, climate actions. How are you lifting women and girls up out of poverty? How are you lifting everyone up out of poverty? We can't just say women and girls all the time because men and boys need to be lifted too. So please send us an update. So I know it's long, it's poverty and climate change circle at gmail.com. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chat. Thank you, Julie. And even though it's long, thank you for creating this fabulous Gmail where we will collect up folks' stories and share it with NGO CSW in hopes they will dedicate a whole page on their website to the... Um, the stories and the actions that we're taking, and then we can continue to share ideas and hopes for action. Just in our small group, we heard of three great projects going on, and I'm sure there were more that we just didn't have time to get to. So thank you, everyone. We can go to our thank you slide. We appreciate all of you. And if from here, if we could go just to the whole group, I just want to acknowledge and thank everyone for coming from all parts of the world. We are one. We have our voices connected. Let's do something for all of us and everyone else. So thank you so very much for coming. We appreciate the meetings. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Apu. you. Happy New Year, by the way. It's the Persian New Year and the Nature New Year also. <laughs> nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy and New Year. Julie, Thank there you. was a question about uh, what you said about violence increasing 6% because yeah. of the 
crisis. I think that 6% for every one degree, either Fahrenheit or Celsius, but someone was asking for the reference for that. So uh, if, if you can hang on for a second, I can get that to you. Excellent. Yeah. So whoever wished for that, Vidar, I think 